Hey guys, how's it going? This is Pretty Joe, and this is the second video in my building a game with Unity. Um, basically, where we're starting from is where we left off. Uh, I've changed around the script a little bit, but if you're following along, I'm going to be assuming that you are too. Because I'm going to show you how to do stuff, but... <laughs> let you give you enough room to expand on it and do what you need to with it what this video is going to show you how to do is create basic movement with a character because we're going to be creating a top-down shooter so what we're going to do is have the character follow the mouse around and we're also going to create a parallax background now if you don't know what a parallax background is it is a it's basically two planes that constant like move at a constant rate and when one gets off the screen it pops back up above the other background so it just creates a continuously moving background all right so basically uh we'll create a new level and just call it level one all right now to get started we'll just move the camera up say 75 and we'll rotate it 90 so it's looking down since we are making a top-down shooter now what we're gonna do first is just set up a constant velocity for the camera so it's just always moving forwards and uh, alright so basically just create a C-sharp script and just call it constant velocity alright now open that one up and no do do oh there we go alright this one's pretty basic don't even need to start now constant velocity So we're just going to create a public vector 3 to give the movement direction and just default it to, oh man, there. default it so that it's moving in the negative z direction. And we're also going to create a float for the movement speed. I prefer to keep these two separate. That way I can change the speed without having to worry about screwing up the direction and vice versa. And the update function is literally just transform dot position plus equals movement speed times movement direction times time dot delta time jeez alright <coughs> if you don't know what this does basically if we take this out it means that every single frame it's going to be moving at so basically one times five so it's going to be moving negative five units in the Z direction. So this thing is going to be flying. Now, if we put this in, this is the amount of time since the last frame. So what it's going to do is, this is a really small number, so it keeps the rate of movement constant no matter what the frame rate is. If you're running at 30 frames or you're running at 60, it doesn't matter because this will fix that error. All right, so we go back in, add our constant velocity to it, and we go. We obviously won't see anything in the game. If we go back to the scene, it's moving. All right, that was easy enough. So 
What we're going to do next is we're going to set up the character to follow the mouse around. And I already have a character created because I'm making another game currently. So I'm first I'm going to create a prefab so I can just update the object in here and not have to worry about it. So create a new prefab, call it main character. We're gonna drag the mesh of the main character on here. <coughs> in your case it might be the um, like a sphere or a cube. Doesn't really matter. He's nice and pink because he doesn't have a material yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually if you use the cube it's going to have a texture on it but if you're just bringing in a random model it's probably not. If it does it'll have that basic white one. So we're going to create a material too. So create new material. It'll just diffuse is fine. You're just going to want to drag your texture up here. And we'll just call it main character underscore mat for material. And just drag it right on the prefab and it's good to go. Got awesome texturing skill. You can tell I'm a programmer. <coughs> Alright. So for the main character, we'll create a new C sharp script and call it mouse follow. And we'll open that up. Now uh, what we'll do is, well, after we rename it, we'll create a public camera called main camera. And in the editor, we'll just drag the main camera in here, and it will just follow along, basically. Now, or well, actually, this will. Uh, this is the camera that we're using to detect if the mouse is where the mouse is on the screen and where we're gonna move depending on that. All right. <coughs> now, to make sure that the main camera has been set, this is what we're gonna basically dedicate our start function to. So it's if main camera. Seat equals null. We're going to find an object that is called main camera. So game object dot find, and you enter the string of the name, which was main camera, and then get its camera component since that's what we are using. If that still equals null, we will look in the static camera class and find its main camera. And this is what this variable returns is any camera or any object that has the tag main camera. <coughs> All right. Now, if the main camera is still null, we'll just throw an error and tell the player that, or tell the editor, whatever that it cannot find any camera to use for um, the main character movement. Because we don't want to have the main character randomly moving around depending on where a cinematic camera or something like that is. It just really doesn't make sense. It's being in camera. Oh wow. Yeah, I got this good enough. 
you'll know what he's talking about, hopefully. Or whoever's using this will know what's wrong, hopefully. And we'll break, and that'll pause the editor, and you'll know for sure that an error was thrown. And here, <clears throat> we will basically move the, the, the main character to the center of the screen, and we'll keep its... We'll keep it a certain distance from the camera, basically. And two. And then, camera dot transform dot position. Take away 60, so it's actually in front of the camera. Now, if you don't rotate your camera, you're going to want to move this 60 or whatever number you choose to either X or Z, depending on where you rotate it, if at all. There. That should be good. <coughs> Alright. Now, in our update, this is where we're going to find where the mouse position is and convert that into world space so that this guy will actually move around depending on where you have your mouse so vector 3 go mouse position and then find the mouse position from the input class now this has a z of 0 and what we're going to be doing is there is a function in the camera class that's called screen to world point and it will turn any screen point into an actual world position now since the z, the, the z is zero it's going to be right basically on top of the camera so we're going to change the mouse position or mouse position z to 60 so that it is 60 units in front of the camera and for the X and Y we're going to make sure that the mouse doesn't go off the screen we're going to limit the player to say maybe he can't go within say 5% of the top or bottom or sides So we'll go math f max. So screen width times zero point zero five f for five percent. And then most position dot x width. So, <coughs> what this is doing is, this is, well, we'll start from here. This is going to return the minimum position of the X of the mouse. If, say, mouse position X is in here, like in the center of the screen, it's going to return this. If the mouse goes farther to the right, it's going to return this. So, no matter what, this basically the right five percent of the screen is not going to be accessible from the mouse now what this does <clears throat> is it takes whatever uh, whatever this had and checks to see which is bigger the first five percent of the screen or wherever the mouse is if the mouse position basically if the mouse position is negative, it's going to return this. And since this is, since we're trying to find the larger number, it's going to stop the mouse right here.